Welcome to Small Arm Solutions. Today we're going to be looking at the SIG M11A1 pistol. Uh, this was put out by SIG a couple years ago along with the uh, Mark 25 uh, Navy SOCOM pistol. Um, this is a very interesting pistol. Um, you know, there's a little bit of history behind it. And what we're going to do is we're going to talk a little bit about where the uh, M11A1 comes from and a little bit of the history behind it. So uh, we're going to jump right into it. In 1985, uh, the XM9 trials went through, and the XM, in the XM9 trials, the final two candidates were the M9 Beretta, or the Bren 92 FS, and the Sig Sauer P226. Um, both of the pistols came out as equals. Uh, the deciding factor ended up being that Beretta uh, was a little bit lower on some of the magazines and the spare parts packages, which helped push them over. So, uh, not too long after that was you know that was challenged and when the retrial uh, came through and the uh, m9 still came out as a, as a on top um, the u.s military put out another uh another requirement and it was for a com a compact pistol uh they wanted something that was going to be uh more for like uh, undercover type people or uh you know people who wanted smaller pistols um the M9 pistol was definitely a large pistol. It was a duty size, duty size pistol, and they wanted something. They wanted something smaller. Well, that contract went to Sig uh, instead of Beretta. Uh, I actually went for the Sig model P228. What the P228 was, it was a smaller version of the actual uh, P226. The Sig P228 on the bottom, as you can see, is a smaller version of the full size duty P226. Now, also keep in mind that during this time, uh, the SIG P226 and the P228 utilized uh, sheet metal uh, slides that had pinned in uh, breech faces. So the, uh, the actual construction of the pistols uh, back in 1985, 86, 87 are a little differently from what we have today. Um, the M11, again, was a standard P228, um, again, with that uh, sheet metal uh, uh, slide. Well, now uh, comes the uh, 1994, around that time period, with the introduction of the SIG P229. The SIG P229 uh, initially was offered in uh, 40 caliber. What made this pistol stand out was the actual slide itself. The slide was actually manufactured in Exeter, New Hampshire, and it was manufactured instead of a you know, stamped sheet metal, basically. Uh, it was manufactured from a solid uh, bar of, of stainless steel. Uh, and with the additional weight that was on there required for the 40 S and W, we now have the 229, which is basically the same frame size as the 228, but with a much heavier and a solid, um, you know, one-piece uh, slide chambered for 40 S and W. Well, probably within a year or so after that, the P229 was introduced in 9 millimeter. Shortly afterwards, it was introduced in the 357 Sig. Well, with the introduction of the one-piece slide, uh, the stamp sheet metal of the P228 was pretty much doomed. Uh, the P229 would now replace the 228, and the 228 would no longer be uh, produced by SIG. Now the P228 did have a very good career. Uh, and there were several federal law enforcement agencies that went with it. Uh, the Secret Service was one of them. Um, there were several other federal agencies. You saw uh, you know, military, and then there was law enforcement as well. Uh, however, once they switched over to the 229, that was also the, the time period where the 9mm was being replaced by the 40. So many of those uh, federal agencies uh, in law enforcement switched over from the 9mm to the 40 caliber. So the 229 uh, basically replaced a lot of the P228s. So uh, now the actual military contract for the M11 was rather limited. Uh, most of those pistols, uh, from what I've seen, uh, generally went to the Navy. Uh, I've seen a lot of them in use there. I have seen some, you know, army use as well, but a majority of the ones I saw were actually uh, Navy. The P226 would go on to be the weapon of choice of SOCOM, uh, and the Navy SEALs were right up through actually a couple, a few weeks ago, when it was replaced by the Glock uh, 19. So uh, about two or three years ago, uh, SIG introduced uh, this new series of pistols. The Mark 25, for instance, uh, which was the actual Navy SEAL version of the P226, they had to actually get permission uh, from the SEALs uh, to actually uh, be able to produce it and sell it commercially, which they did. Now, the Mark 25, unlike the P226, utilizes the one-piece uh, stainless steel slide uh, rather than, the, again, the stamped sheet metal. So it's the more updated version uh, of the pistol itself. 
Uh, you can also tell we have the, uh, the the Navy anchor on there and the UID code as well. Well, the M11A1 uh, has not seen any ser any service uh, from what I'm aware of, but um, it has also gotten the same UID label on there, and it says M11A1. Generally, when you have an A1, it means it's an it's an update or an improvement. Now, taking a, a look at this pistol, we can see some of the improvements. Now, it still uh, uses a 228 frame, uh, but what makes it different is the slide itself. The slide is one piece stainless steel, and if you can also see here when you compare it to the 229, you can see that the extractor on it is uh, is much larger on the on the Mark 11 or the M11A1 than on the 229. By having that longer extractor assembly, uh, gives you more leverage, uh, which increases your extraction force. So that's one of the major uh, major benefits. But if you also look at the actual uh, pattern the way that it was cut. This has the same cut that you would have had on a P226 or P228, where this was the P229 serrations on the, on the slide itself. Um, these also come with the, the, uh, the uh, tritium night sights. And another very interesting variation uh, on this pistol is, is the magazine. The P228's normally held uh, 13 rounds of 9mm ammunition. This magazine's been modified, now it holds 15. So you have the same gun, the same size, but it actually holds 15 rounds instead of, uh, instead of 13. You also notice on the top of the M11A1 you have the actual SIG emblem, and you also have the SIG night sights, and again we'll see the UID label. Now again, uh, this pistol, from everything that I know of, has never seen any military service whatsoever. I don't believe that the military has bought any 228s in a long time. So I believe this could be more of a uh, commemorative type pistol than an actual uh, U.S. military pistol. I could be wrong on that, but uh, from, from everything that I know of, I, I'm not aware of this having any military service in it whatsoever. Um, the pistol disassembles the same way as any SIG does. So right now this is the same frame that uh, the 229 and the, uh, all the previous ones use. Uh, like any SIG pistol, you have a braided recoil spring. Now, uh, braided recoil springs are probably one of the best recoil springs in the industry, um, but this is necessary. You can see how short this uh, spring guide is, which means that the actual uh, recoil spring itself has a very short uh, amount of length that can stack up uh, in, that, in that small frame. So you have to have this heavy recoil spring to have the pistol be reliable so the spring doesn't wear out after only a few hundred shots. Um, these springs are very, very reliable. It's a five braided spring. Uh, Used it used to be, and it looks like now it's uh, looks like it's about two now. Uh, these used to be about it used to be five braids on the two two nines. Two two eight may be a little bit different. Uh, but these springs, you know, you normally get five to six thousand rounds out of them very very easily. Uh, it is something that you do want to watch out for on these guns again because you have such a slow, such a small compartment in there where that spring can actually contract. Now looking at the barrel itself, uh, nine millimeter nitride coated. So basically the same barrel you'd have in the 228. Now looking in the slide here, you can actually see where some of the material has been machined out uh, to make the slide lighter for the 9mm as opposed to the uh, 40 s and w or the 57 SIG which requires a, a, you know, more mass on the extra bolt carrier itself. You can also see the passive firing pin block uh, as well. And the machining on these is absolutely gorgeous. Uh, there's no machine marks on these anywhere. Uh, it's, it, this is the typical, what you would expect out of SIG for as far as uh, this quality. You do have a, a pin in there that holds in the firing pin. This is There is no breech block in here like there was on the uh, original 228s, 226s where you had the rolled uh, sheet metal um, slides. Uh, again, it's all one piece. It's also hardened. So we're going to put this back together. Very simple to put back together. every SIG you have a, a decock, decocking lever. So decock, again you can see that the firing pin or the hammer does not touch the firing pin, it still stays out. In order for it to go forward you actually have to have the trigger all the way to the rear. Now it can actually go forward to strike the firing pin. So that's a safety on top of the, the decocking lever. Um, you have a very long heavy drawn double action pull. Fires as it comes back it puts you in single action. The trigger on this one is not bad. Uh, this P229 that I have here, the trigger on double action is quite brutal. 
Uh, this is definitely a lot lighter uh, than the P229 that I have there. Uh, very high quality pistol. Um, they're not a, they're not inexpensive by no means. Well, neither is any Sig. Uh, but uh, for those who are looking for a, a compact nine millimeter, uh, this is an excellent 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 choice uh, to say the least. Uh, again, with having the original P228 uh, hand grips on there, which uh, again this pistol has been out of production for quite some time. So I'm not sure if this is going to be a limited run uh, on these or if it's going to be you know regular product for for several years to come or not. Yeah, quite frankly, once the P229 came out in 9mm, there was really no reason to keep any of the uh, compact pistols that had the um, the sheet metal uh, slide. It, it just wasn't. Um, there was absolutely no benefit to the sheet metal slide over this over the one-piece stainless steel. Um, the one the sheet metal uh, slides were known to have issues with uh, when you would fire, uh, you know, excessive amount of rounds. The actual pins that held uh, the breech block into the slide would actually break in two or three pieces. Uh, that was that was always an issue. And the other issue was too is uh, the breech blocks on those original pistols were not uh, were not hardened. Um, I actually had had an incident one time with a, a model P220 uh, when I was doing an endurance test on a laser sight for Laser Max. Um, I was doing I remember it was a five or six thousand round endurance test on those lines somewhere. And the ammunition we were using was uh, I don't know if you remember it all. CCI had what they called a clean fire, uh, probably in the early 90s. Uh, it was the first lead free. Uh, car, uh, you know, cartridge. It was a totally encapsulated projectile with a, 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 a lead barium free uh, primer. Well, those primers burned awfully hot compared to uh, the standard primers. And unbeknownst to me, that uh, what was happening was the actual metal uh, around the firing pin, uh, where, the, where, where the firing pin was, was actually starting to flow. And what ended up happening was, was uh, after firing several rounds, uh, of the CCI clean fire, I switched over to uh, the 185 grain plus P flying ash trace, which is a quite a bit of recoil on this P220. Well, what ended up happening was was the metal actually flowed into the firing pin channel from uh, it being heated up, and actually grabbed the firing pin. It held the firing pin, so the pistol worked as an open bolt machine gun. And I can tell you, firing seven rounds uh, uh, uncontrollable with a 45 auto plus P when you're not expecting it was scary as hell. Um, SIG and CCI went back and forth uh, for a little while on that one to see who was going to pay for it. Uh, CCI said they'd never seen that happen before with any, any other gun with their ammunition. Uh, SIG saying they'd never seen that happen before with any of their guns. So I, I do believe that uh, uh, SIG was the one who actually re uh, replaced the pistol, but I don't think either one of them really ready to claim any responsibility for what happened. But there obviously was an issue between that particular type of ammunition and a non-hardened breech face. So with the with these uh, one piece slides, you, you have all that. Um, the Sig pistols are again they're second to none. They are combat military grade pistols. Um, there's literally nothing that uh, you could ask this pistol to do that it can't do. Uh, it's done for for it's done so for uh, soldiers and uh, special operations guys all over the world. Uh, they've come to rely on it. And now we're going to take the uh, M11A1 to the range and we're going to see how she shoots. Put a few rounds through the new SIG M11A1, which is basically a retake on the original U.S. government M11. Uh, this is basically a SIG 228 uh, with an updated slide. And one of the most notable features is, is the magazines. The original uh, P228s had a, um, I believe it was a 13 round magazine. These are actually now 15. Uh, the ammunition we're using is actually provided by SIG Sauer as well. It's the new SIG Elite Performance Ammunition. Uh, this is a 115 grain full metal jacket.
I thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Uh, please click like and please subscribe. Thank you.